Hey guys, welcome to shop. Today's video is on metrology tools, i.e. this cylinder square I just made. Uh, lathe alignment, whoop, lathe alignment, leveling, and all that jazz. So I think we'll start with the, uh, I guess, fun or boring stuff first, but, you know, so Grizzly Lathes, I'm not a huge fan of this arrangement. Now, I apologize for the shaky cam. It's hard to take a video of these. Now, the way it works on these is this headstock is bolted to the base in the ways. So you have these four bolts here. You have an adjustment bolt with a lock nut back under here. And there's two more bolts behind the timing cover and another adjustment screw on the back side. Now that adjusts your spindle in relation to the ways. So I crashed this a little while ago and it was cutting funny. So I really started chasing it down. Now on this particular machine, it's a combination of the way the ways are ground. So these ways have a hump like this. Now that's really unfortunate because it does make it harder to square this machine. Now, so what I wound up doing is I leveled it, had the spindle aligned level, um, align the tail stock to the aligned spindle and it's still cutting funny once I was between centers. And what I wound up doing is actually just dropping this corner down a couple thousandths to get everything to cut square. And I'm really glad I did because I got my cylinder squares square over seven and three quarter inches to about seven tenths or a little better. Um, I'm gonna play with it because how I hold the indicator, I can make it perfectly square or it's out by a thousand. So I'm not 100% sure on that. But I will tell you when you're aligning this, it's easy if you get one of the sockets, it just goes right into this Morse taper. That's the easiest way to align the headstock. I didn't have one of those. So I put a piece of steel in the fore jaw and basically used the two collars method. Uh, it turns out I had five and three quarter inches sticking out. Um, it was almost one to one with how far I moved this end with how much I was taking off taper wise. So that's just something to bear in mind. If someone's really interested, I can show you guys how I align the headstock. It's tedious and it's frustrating, but it is important. I was drilling out of round by a couple thousandths, so that was good to check. You know, I was boring out of round too. It, but I wouldn't have detected that without a tenth micrometer. Now, I have half by 20 bolts under there, and these are 5 8 13, or 5 8 11. Um, yeah, they're not, they're 5 8 11. So these are just to make it steady. I have these stick out almost eight inches on the back. And I'll stick you guys back in here and try and get a good shot of this cylinder square. It's really exciting actually. So if you do this all in one setup, you get a really good perpendicularity. Now I'll slide the surface plate over just so you guys can get a better view of the indicator. Yep. So, this is just trying not to disturb it. How you hold this will move everything quite a lot, especially up here. So we're reading zero there. Going to rotate it, ring it a little bit, just make sure it's settled. And we're off by two and a half tenths. So I think that's pretty good actually for a first try in a cylinder square. I'm not sure I'm going to grind this in further, to be honest with you, because I may actually make it worse. And see on my second reading with a lighter touch, we're off about three tenths. So that's pretty good. Try 90. We're off a tenth. Uh, 
off a tenth. Yeah, so I think our max deviation, I'm comfortable saying that's about half a thousandth. Now, this is really useful if you're grinding, actually. This is more of a grinding tool than a, um, oh God, what's the word? More of a grinding tool than something you'll use off the mill because off the mill, I'll show you, I just have some precision squares. So I have this square, which is fixed. This is pretty good. I mean, this is square to within a couple tenths. Now be gentle on your surface plate. You don't want to bang them up. I keep my surface plate under my check plate under a rag. Now this square is usually good to within a thousandth, maybe one and a half. So it's really all a matter of what you're doing. It, the degree of precision on a cylinder square is al almost always measured in tenths. Now you can buy them for quite a lot of money but they're not hard to bang out between centers on a lathe. Now, the way I did this is I held the part between centers like so, but I counterbored this pretty dramatically and I just turned it so it's within two tenths this way, which, okay, so with my micrometers, which I don't have top notch ones, if you're within half a thou repeatably, I consider that the practical limit. Um, if you're within two tenths, that's like the absolute limit. That That's as close as I trust them. But this is counterboard pretty closely. So while you're between centers, all you've got to do is come in with your tool and just tickle this a little bit. And that'll square you right up. And also this surface area here, you have less to be disturbed on the surface plate. Now, just for funsies, we're gonna have it picked up completely and check again. And we're a tenth off. So I think that that's pretty square. Uh, you know, it's not perfect, but so a cylinder square is really useful because if you're like, me and you kind of are just like, well, I want to check this really quick. You just run your tool up or your comparator up to it and set zero. We're on zero. We're a tenth off. Excuse me while I stick my stump, my tongue out and focus on this. So assuming this is a perfect cylinder square, now we're perfectly square. So if you want to check something you're working on, let me grab something about eight inches tall, not too heavy. Mm, you know what, we're just gonna use an illustrative example. So something like this, we're gonna assume this is perfectly square. So when I just go sweep the indicator across this, we're off so far on this, it, the DTI is not even touching. So you can also tell because this rocks. That's a dead giveaway or off square. Now this doesn't, you push down on this. That's another thing to check. See how actually flat you are on the bottom. Touch off the indicator. See how much it moves? It moves only about a tenth. And what that tells me is there's probably the slightest amount of dirt or burr on this side. So this is just a squareness comparator. Now a comparator is not an absolute measurement, it's a relative measurement. Oh. Yeah, we're moving two tenths. And that's pretty good for something that isn't ground. Uh, it's, let me see if I can get an angle. It's hard to do this freehand. See, we're sweeping. So we're about a tenth off. Now, I'm only able to repeat on this within a tenth, so that, that's the limit of my measuring equipment. So, that is what's called a squareness comparator. Now, it's a relative measurement. Well, the, I'm using this 
surface gauge as a squareness comparator. Now this is your square. And the benefit of this too, if you're holding it up to another object, is that once you are against it, I have an extremely small amount of contact area between the two parts. So that makes it really easy to see if you're actually square on it. Now, I think what we're gonna use is a one, two, three block. It's because, you know what, these are my good ones. And a bright light behind it as just an example, and the gap is how far off square you are. Now, if you see here, a little light at the bottom, but the gap's pretty even the whole way up. See? Now, I think what we're going to do is actually flip this over a nice clean surface and compare again. You see the gap's smaller, but it's so it's hard to say now is that the chamfer on the block or is that my square? But I've checked my square a couple different times and the square is pretty square. So it's also fun to have a round square, but that's the benefit of this round shape is just when these two are touching, you know, it's very just, it's easy to see. Now the surface finish isn't on this isn't perfect, especially down here at the bottom, it's kind of lightly chowdered. So I am wondering if I'm gonna turn a few more tenths off that or just leave it. Because you can see it's, Basically, the gauge does this and then straightens out. But I'm really much more concerned with here up because from this area down, I already have a square that works. And this is mostly to set a test indicator. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was slightly interesting on some shop-made tools and a brief way to use them. Thanks for watching. I hope you like and subscribe.